What are we, Netflix? <laughs> Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. It is the Monday Mayhem Wrap-Up. Hello, everybody out there in Internet land. We are ready to talk about what is happening in the world of wrestling. Our first dip-in, of course, of the week. Of course, we are here uh, every every Monday, more or less. Sometimes things happen uh, here after Raw, here on, on the Facebook Live for Wrestling Mayhem Show, or wherever else you may be uh, at. We're streaming to multiple, multiple, multiple locations tonight and, uh, and, and seeing... Uh, uh, what's going on out there, world? Uh, so uh, throwing out to that, and if I hit the right button, or in even more locations. Oh, hello, other locations. We have with us all around, um, well, northeastern United States. Uh, so high representation of wrestling fans here. <laughs> <laughs> we of course have with us. Oh no, my switcher went away. Where is my switcher? Hold on a second. I don't have anybody here. Well, you can hear the voice of Mad Mike from Beacon, New York. He's the only Mayhemer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE, of course, as usual. Uh, Sorg, so am I running into Awesome Cast and causing a ruckus this week? Yes. It's the Sur- Welcome to the podcast Survivor Series, mm-hmm. where it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show versus Awesome Cast versus, um, I don't know, Bardic Mystery Tour. That's nice. the wrinkle. Excellent. That's the that's the newer for it's, the first time wrink, ever. It's a wrinkle in time, Sorg. It's a wrinkle in time, uh, of course. And so, and we also have to help with the uh, to help us with our army. We have uh, uh, returning to the show, but uh, uh, via via the interwebs is uh, nasty, nasty Nick Farah is joining us tonight. Hello, everyone. Internet. He's very quiet. I don't know. I don't. He's he's, he's very. I'm a- we're bringing it closer. I Come got, on. I got You're an announcer. I need you to project for me. Is this better? Is it working? Yeah, it's a little better. I think it's kind of okay. going a little bit. But I have uh, a feeling he's he's inputting into the wrong mic. Yeah, he's talking into the wrong. I think I think his finger is going over the mic hole or something like that. Oh, maybe that too. That, that, like he's he's got to like because he would like go out completely sometimes. So this is the first time we're seeing if Nick can can join us remotely and and see how this rolls because you know. Stuff happens, and I mean, not that he has far to come from, but he does have to. It is a jaunt over here a little bit, so I appreciate this. So uh, bear with us as we kind of figure out how this goes. So first of all, before we get into it, what is your good of the week, guys? Mike, uh, you, Mike, this is always the fun one. What is yeah. your good of the week? Um, th- it was NXT Takeover Buffalo. Yes. Yeah, that happened on Friday. That was great. Uh, so, you know, so somebody, I can't remember if it was Billy or Jen Carlin's likely Jen Carlin's, uh, said, Hey, do you want to go to Buffalo Smackdown Buffalo? And I'm like, eh, it's Smackdown Buffalo. Oh yeah. You should have jumped. on. I that. don't know, man. You know, whoever it was, I apologize because damn it, we missed it. But who would have guessed there'd be an international incident in travel <laughs> 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 and we would have gotten something like that. Right. Oh boy. It's a shame they couldn't keep that momentum. No, definitely not. <laughs> they definitely. I, I, I really likened didn't. it to uh, the Simpsons episode, Lisa's substitute, mm-hmm. where she gets Mister Bergstrom for like a week, and it's amazing. And then Miss Hoover comes back, and Lisa chases him on the train as he's leaving. <laughs> it's like, no, please, travel issues, come back. Yes, we yes. miss you. Uh Nick, what is your awesome of the week? Well, I got two. I uh, I debuted at a new company. Uh, this past weekend, I announced for uh, KSWA. Nice. And then last night, Black Diamond did War Games. War Games. The big blue cage, like that thing is phenomenal. That is my, uh, the, and that's also my great, the, my good of the week is that big blue cage. Um, I, I was setting up a GoPro in it, so we we were kind of baiting like missy has been like you're not getting in the cage you're not shooting in the cage and and, because i mean there were like eight guys in that ring right or i guess nine including george uh the referee but um dude that was so cool (laughs) i showed some pictures of the wrestling mayhem show uh facebook group and and it's it's well constructed it is made of wood 
qualify, but it is a replica, big blue cage. It, it looks cool. It feels cool. I know there were guys on the roster after the show that were just getting in there to be inside the blue cage <laughs> and see how it feels to be in there. So um, did, did you get in the cage? Well, yeah, I did. For, for I had to get a GoPro on, and they were putting oh, the last okay. side on, so I was kind of trapped in the cage and had to wait for them for a minute. And then somebody took a nice picture of me in the cage and said, despite all my rage, I'm just a sorg in the cage. Yeah, so I, mean, I appreciate yeah, that. Do. I do appreciate yeah, do. that. Thank you. Uh, so fans catching me in interesting moments this weekend, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Um, I was uh, one of the apparently few people at the Ring of Honor show on Saturday, and um, and uh, we'll talk. I want to talk more about Ring of Honor tomorrow night for the most part. Uh, but there was an incident. Incident. Um, there was a four way match, which included PJ Black, by the way, Mike. Uh, so it was cool to see him in action. Uh, but uh, uh, Kenny King was in it, uh, Ultimo Guerrero, and one of the dudes that hangs out with che- Cheeseburger. Um, so like, I, Is he a side of fries? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's like Shinobi, Shinobi Hit Squad or something is their group. Oh, okay, I, I was trying to go for a pun, but you were actually giving information. Cut. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's kind of the same thing with Ring of Honor. Uh, so so like we were, thanks Billy Johnson, he, he got us some, some ringside, ringside tickets. He was uh, uh, under the weather and couldn't make it out. Uh, so I got to hang with cameraman Rob over there. So, uh, um, so, so, so multiple goods. One, I've always wanted to be one of the guys that that got the bang on the the metal things at Ring of Honor. So, okay, life goal there. And I was in a big blue cage, so double life goal. Um, so three guys are fighting over us, and and you know, Mike, I've been at this a bit, and my wrestling like brain started to kick in and said, "Wait, there's three guys here. There's mm-hmm. a four way match." Mm-hmm. We're missing. These guys are really close to me. Mm-hmm. Oh God, he's gonna jump off the stage in front uh, behind me, isn't he? And, oh yeah. And and thank you. Uh, I believe it was Matt up in the up in the 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 balcony uh, got a video of of the it happening and my reaction apparently. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I, I shared the tweet with those things. Those are exactly what was going through my head during that su- sequence of events. But I didn't catch until I saw the video because there was a a, a a young girl beside me and her father and you saw like the reaction of it happening. He grabs and protects instinctually the, the child and then in the next moment after it happens is standing up arms in the air cheering. <laughs> it, was, it was great. Um, but no, it was a lot of fun. That was a whole lot of fun. What was it? I was an ROH heater. No, he was on, although he was in the same aisle as me uh, over by the steps. Uh, <laughs> but it was, it was some good stuff. A lot of fun. Um, also, let's see. Uh, Tina says, uh, favorite segment from SmackDown personally, Bianca B- Belair showing why she's the EST. Just mm-hmm. just destroying people in the back. Um, Literally, just tossing Carmella God knows where. <laughs> <laughs> just like over the over the case into nothingness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just like, nope, we are done with you. Go back to Total Divas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that's what that was. Here's uh, Alex's, Alex Miller's asking out there. He says, how, how, how about his SmackDown and Raw wrestlers going to get a, a, a boot on Wednesday? Yes. Absolutely. I... Since they've been cheered across everything else. Although I, still, I, w- I want Randy Orton to show up and fight Johnny Gargano on NXT. Mm. Well, that's kind of like the evasion from uh, ECW in 2006, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. A little. It's, this is successful uh, so far. <laughs> I like it. I like the idea. Of it. Tonight was a little less successful, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. A little less because, like, I don't know. It just seemed less. It seemed more thought out. If that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Like I... the only thing that really worked for me was Shayna and Becky. Yeah. Really. Hmm. So, oh yeah, that was great. So you're you're not getting into these uh, Adam, Adam the Adam Cole uh, prime time tour? Uh, no, because it's all about Triple H. <laughs> Adam Cole didn't speak once. That's true. If Adam Cole just came out and said the exact same thing that Seth, that Triple H said, I'd be absolutely fine with it. But no, it's the Triple H show, and I don't yeah, like but you that. You know what this is leading to, right? Hmm. This is going to be the elimination match at Survivor Series. It's going to be. Team SmackDown, Team Raw, Team NXT, Adam Cole's obviously the leader. Yeah. Seth Rollins, obviously the leader. And I, I 
I don't want to know. I, I don't want to say that Daniel Bryan's going to be a hundred percent in there yet. Cause mm-hmm. I think he was like, well, you're here cause you didn't go. So this is going to be a really good match. You're going up against Adam Cole. Yeah. And it's kind of like what Mike said, you know, this tonight felt more thought out, but I like that. Like I felt like SmackDown, which it was rushed, but it felt rushed. Mm. I I thought SmackDown felt natural. Raw no. felt forced. Yeah, I I thought I thought SmackDown felt natural and fluid, mm. whereas Raw felt overly forced. Like, oh, everyone's showing up in black limousines to start the show. Like, first of all, it takes all the surprise out of it. Mm-hmm. It takes all the surprise out. Of it. Like, you could have just had the first instance be Shayna showing up in that Becky interview. Mm-hmm. And that would have been, whoa, Shayna's here? And she's just, like, casually having a sit-down? That That's okay. That's weird. I like it. I'm with so, you, but I, I feel like we're already expecting that after some, after Friday, too. Or, like, well, yeah, they're going to start on Raw next, right? So, But that's why you should flip those expectations. Mm-hmm. So, Mike, you're basically saying, like, we get it. It's Survivor Series, but don't force it down our throats with every segment. They they forced it because it's just Triple H talking about all these people instead of on SmackDown where they did stuff. Mm-hmm. They did stuff on SmackDown. Like you didn't have to have Triple H come out and say this is Rhea Ripley. She's a badass motherfucker from England. She just came out and wrecked house. Yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, we did have a bit of um. We had the the. Okay, so. We did have trope, Triple H and Seth, and, and we did get a, a, a brawl with the, a lot of the roster. But you're saying that's still overshadowed by Seth and Trips. Because the commentary kept telling me it was about Seth and Triple H. Right. All during that Adam Cole uh, Rollins match, King, because he's a fucking moron and has no, no clue about what NXT is, he still thinks it stands for something. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, who does Triple H want to win? Like, no one fucking cares who Triple H wants to win. Yeah. Okay. That's the fucking point of this. Yeah. From SmackDown, you could see that, like, there was always that question of, okay, who's really behind it? Who's the leader? Who's the leader of Pat? And then at the end, you really got, it drove it home. Okay, it's Triple H. Mm-hmm. But then now this gives Triple H the opportunity of coming back and being full-blown dickhead mode the entire show. Right. But I don't like that Triple H is the leader because mm-hmm. he ain't going to wrestle. No, but he's still the figurehead to represent. It should be William Regal. I, yeah. yeah. It should be William Regal. Yeah. Like, if I'm you're going to have a figurehead, it should be William goddamn Regal. Yeah, but Triple H is the bigger name, so they're going to go with it. So no, Triple H is the bigger ego, so they're going to go uh, with it. No, it mm. That's what it is. I'm going... I, I'm not going to have this argument again. Um, sorry. So, so uh, this bringing up about SmackDown, because we, we have to talk about this on the show, but I know we've been talking about it in the group all weekend. Uh, Tina saying, surprised that NXT on SmackDown came out so well. They had to go from uh, the charter plane to the arena with police escort. Carnes mm-hmm. is saying the story of NXT crew, crew uh, landing f- uh, in Buffalo Friday at 7.55. And then I was, and, and, you know, uh, producer Missy, of course, is from the uh, widely greater Buffalo area. I, I <laughs> that's vaguely specific I, well it's not like two hours away from buffalo okay yeah. so uh, you know, it's I, like saying i'm from the city yeah it's like you're from the you're from the greater new york city area it's probably about the same thing right so so but she has a familiarity with the layout up there and she's she was kind of you know the airport's closer than like we're used to in here in pittsburgh um so it, it's not like as crazy right as as our situation here but still getting across buffalo to the arena right is uh you know to downtown buffalo i think more or less if i recall where that arena is um that's still a pretty big thing uh the triplet that has more probably has more to i'm trying to figure out Carlos yeah i I, I think matt's got cut off yeah but, um, uh, I, I i would love i don't think this happened i hope they filmed the documentary about this like there's the cameras somewhere. Of, there, 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 there's there, there, gotta be. Come on, we know WWE is basically um, um, filming background on everything happening, right? Mm-hmm. Like we know that's happening. 
Like yeah. on anything that can potentially be a story down the line, there is background being shot. Right. Yeah, I just I just wonder if this was too last minute for them to do something like that though. Yeah, wouldn't it, unless your documentary guys were all still in Saudi. Well, I mean, Jeremy Borash is probably in Florida, so I'm sure yeah. he was. He could do it. There's always like that dude with the with the uh, DSLR tricked out behind the crowd that I see, and then and then legit like I saw it, and then two weeks later I saw a, a Goldberg documentary about him coming back. Right. So yeah. I mean, this like this is always happening. They got. I mean. And I know they were probably short staffed because even production was in Saudi, and there was there was a story about the referees were were uh, uh, pitching in on production and setup uh, more than they usually do, uh, you know, with with the being short handed and everything like that. It was a really wild weekend for for uh, curious situations in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see. Uh, also here from the chat room, some more Triple H thing probably has more to do with Vince's sensibilities and preferences than anything Triple H may want. Maybe. I mean, seriously, we you know, look again. Look through Vince lens, right? Yeah. Um, more people know who Triple H is than William Regal. It's not about what makes sense. It's about what's going to sell more pay per views. Oh shit! Triple H is involved. When I go to the pizza shop and we're talking about pro wrestling, they're going to bring up Triple H being involved, and that would be more of a, a talking point to the general public than but William it's, Regal. But it's directly going against what happened on SmackDown. Okay. Like, just, you didn't have, like, you had Triple H in a background segment, and that was fine. Mm -hmm. Like, and he was acting like he didn't know what was going on, which is fine. But then you showed people how, like, it's show, don't tell. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the whole point of this. Because you can tell me everything you want like triple h can come out and tell me that nxt is a great brand and everything like that yeah but unless you actually show me mm-hmm. i ain't gonna buy it isn't that what we're doing with the adam cole matches not really because the the, the adam cole match on smackdown yes yes he won clean mm-hmm. clean as a sheet in the middle of the ring this one it made it look like adam cole couldn't beat seth rollins mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. far away is survivor series uh, a couple weeks Two three weeks. Yeah. I, I I think the reason that this is starting to feel so rushed is just because they had the opportunity if everybody would have made it back from Saudi. They had the opportunity to drag it out. Yeah. With everybody still being stuck overseas, they didn't have that opportunity to drag it out and make it, you know, everybody slowly attacking everybody then right before the main show on SmackDown. It just breaks out. Mm-hmm. You know? No, but see, that's the thing. I thought what they did on SmackDown was what they should have done. Mm-hmm. Later, down. I, I I think if the whole roster was there, we wouldn't have seen NXT at all. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it was too soon. No, I don't. I don't. I completely disagree. I completely disagree because yeah. SmackDown would have just been boring ass Roman Reigns versus boring ass King Corbin and the Miz. Trying to talk to Bray Wyatt, who just won the Universal title. Instead, we got stuff that's actually interesting. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it worked out in our favor. Um, it, it's, yeah, it, it, you know, who knows what the original story was uh, going into this or how this is going to be laid out. But obviously, we had to jump ahead on it, and and they're in full in. We're invading uh, mode. But it also, also being this is a sort of three way dance between the three um, uh, brands. It's interesting to me. It's, it really seems to be everybody versus NXT. Two. Mm, I I don't know. I mean, it was it was definitely Raw versus NXT tonight. Yeah, and then it was NXT versus SmackDown. At least the uh, crumblings of what was left after the uh, Saudi trip. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, you know, so so it's it's them kind of saying, "Hey, we're here." So what happens next? Is it you know is Raw is it going to be Raw versus SmackDown or are they all just fending off NXT? Well, I mean the matches that were announced tonight kind of lend to what's going to happen. The, the three way situations, right? The the two three way matches, and yeah. we're definitely not getting a main champions versus triple threat match. No, no, because that would just look ridiculous. Yeah, it would be Brock Lesnar, the Fiend, and Adam Cole. So that's that would clearly be... not happening. I mean. 
we we were pontificating the other night about like man what would you do with that you know what would like i want to see what that looks like right i mean do you want to know what i'd do with that huh I'd have Brock give the Fiend 10 F5s. Adam Cole kick Brock in the dick and pin the Fiend. <laughs> That's what i do. Yeah. It sounds like solid booking. Uh... <laughs> but how many out of the 10 times is the Fiend going to kick out at one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but an F5 is not a stomp. Yeah. Like, F5s are different. F5s are... Nope. F5s, if you're looking at a 2K20 scale... Uh, it hemorrhages the whole body. The stomp hemorrhages everything. Your hair blows off of your body, and then you're stuck in the ropes. And then uh, weird browser um uh configurations with the referee. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then there's a patch that doesn't fix it. Then there's a patch that just just adds the browser's logo at the at the side. Uh, <laughs> that's what really thing happens. Uh, but anyways, wow. Um. It's an interesting time with that. Interesting, you know, it's curious to see where we go with that. Um, we've obviously solved the Brock uh, and Fiend championship problem. Uh, well, we that. solved the Brock problem. We've solved the Brock problem? We haven't solved the Fiend problem? He wasn't mentioned at all tonight. No, he wasn't. He's also the ch- he's also a SmackDown drafted champion. Yes, but he is the universal. Like, Raw didn't make mention that they don't have a main champion. Well, they do because Brock. They made mention that Brock is now a contracted Raw person. Yeah, I, I, I hate that. I hate that. I entirely. don't like it either. But they went to pains to explain how it happened. But also, they really broke down this idea that you know, hey, um, this doesn't matter. But Ray, you know, this. this 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 brand split is really solid, but Ray's been accompanying Kane Velasquez for the last how many weeks on SmackDown? Like that's where, yeah. Both... yeah. I mean, the whole thing like they negated the draft as soon as it happened. Hey, uh, Aaron, Aaron, I think your 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 uh, wheels. I think your your fixed WWE two K twenty hashtag just needs to be uh, knocked down to fix WWE in general. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, that's fair. Um, tonight, though, not as great as SmackDown. I think Raw for uh, some good stuff on in the background while I was working on independent pro wrestling projects. And this is why you think Raw is good. No, 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 no. I think Raw. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think Raw is good. I don't think Raw is 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 breathtaking television. I I don't. I'm not really crazy about a uh, friend of the show, Eric, and the Vikings, um, who had mic time tonight. Uh, just destroying like what are they the Polo Twins or something? What the yeah. fuck are we doing? What are we doing? You have a tag team division and you're just gonna beat up jobbers and well, dressed as the Sorg, Chicago Cubs. Or they're not gonna do anything until after, because the tag team division on Raw is broken. Because mm-hmm. you have the OC become the best tag team in the world. Yeah. Yet not only are they not the champions. They got beat by the Street Profits, who weren't even in the match, but somehow had to travel to Saudi for reasons? Wait, wait, wait. Street Profits were there in Saudi and weren't in that match? Yep. What did they do? I don't know. Uh, I think they were looking for the smoke. <laughs> That's what I've... They, they want the smoke. They want the smoke. They They're want the seeking smoke. the smoke. They took a very long plane, plane trip to get the smoke. Mm-hmm. And could not get the smoke. And all they got were mechanical problems on the tarmac. Hey, you know what? That's where the smoke was. Ah, the smoke was the engine. Ah, got it. But yeah, like that's <laughs> and 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 the authors of pain have been trapped in a room. Yes, for like two and a half months, saying they know nothing but violence and pain. And behind them, behind the uh, the authors of pain, is uh, uh, Alistair, Alistair Black, Black sitting on the floor waiting for somebody to knock. You know what would be great? If next time the authors of pain do a promo, they just pan out and Alistair Black is actually just sitting right next to them. Like, <laughs> hey, when did you guys get here? It, like some, or 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 is some version of since we're doing the the '70s show gimmick over on uh, Impact Wrestling, uh, what, why don't we just like that's what's happening here too? They just like 
it's around. There's Alistair. And there's... they always dream hello, Wisconsin? Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> but... That's a deep cut. That's something they should well, No, 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 no. Then, then the street prophets have to be in the room, too, because they're looking for the smoke. Because they want the smoke. They yeah, want the course. smoke, and they thought that's where it was. Mm-hmm. And, and and then Seth Rollins comes listen, in and goes, "Burn!" That's it it. I mean, it's just like it's just a circle of people that want something. AOP want to be violent ass, violent, you know, I, people. I don't say assholes, just violent. They just want violence. Uh, Alistair wants somebody to pick a fight. Uh, the Street Profits want the smoke. And uh, what was the other one that we had? Seth wants to burn it down. Seth wants to burn it down. The people with once, and we kind of roll it around. And we just we created a new segment, maybe a new show for WWE Network. <laughs> what wrestlers want? What wrestlers starring, want? Starring Mel Gibson. What wrestlers want? What they really, really want? Uh, Matt <laughs> Carlin's <laughs> the Spice Boys. The Spice That's their Boys. name. That's their name. And the for some reason, AOP Boys. had to sit on one chair because that's all we had. Jeez. Um, uh, but anyways, what the hell are we doing here? We're talking about wrestling. Nick, are you still with us? I'm still with you. Oh, good. Uh, Matt Carlin says brand splits are like Jello; it takes time to set. Ugh. I'd rather That's brand splits joke. be like Jello shots. You do them immediately, and then you don't have to think of it again. Well, that's kind of how they have been <laughs> in the past. <laughs> hey, we did this. We forgot about it. And uh, wild card roll: three people can come over. How many people? I don't know. All these guys are over here. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they bring the swag like nobody. They, can. They, they, <laughs> oh, was that Nick? Yeah, I thought they killed that. They did. Oh, they 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 did kill that. Technically, sure, sure for, they did. Except for uh, except for like, Cain Velasquez has a uh, uh, bring my bring my my mask buddy for free card. <laughs> no, uh, Sorg, Sorg, say what you wanted to say. Bring my son to work day. <laughs> That's that's no, what that's you wanted what to I was say. Th- that's not what I was thinking. Sorg, was, that's what you wanted it, to say because maybe a bring Lucha. because it it's a weird dichotomy where Ray looks like Kane's son, but Kane also looks like Ray's son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird like dog. from a distance, you can't tell if that's Dominic or Kane Velasquez. <laughs> From a distance, you're just like, wait, wait, is that uh-huh. what is that what Dominic looks like without his shirt off? It's just yep. Cain Velasquez. Yep, it's like a Superman. And, and if you just Superman, what? If you just change the white scale on it, it's Walter. Mm. Oh, like if you're in creative wrestling and go, Voop, and... yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. I think we have offended enough. Uh, we want the smoke. Everybody. <laughs> we do oh, want the smoke. Nick, what do oh, you want? Boy. Um, wait, hold on. Who was who was the one who's teamed with the Street Profits? I'm horrible with names tonight. Umberto Carrillo. Yeah, why does he look like he's twelve? Oh, because he is. Wait, wait. <laughs> no, he's a child. He's like twenty one. Wait, he he doesn't even look like he hit puberty yet, and he's a big fan of the Power Rangers, which I love. <laughs> That's. I just want him to go full blown White Ranger. Come out to the ring. Okay. That's what I want. That I mean, that's fair. I, I think that his works. Tiger Sword would be Lindsay Dorado. Yeah. Go go, Kitty Catman. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, uh, Brandon Sinkar, the girl with Sinkar is Carolina. Catalina. I don't know where she yeah. came from. Uh, she is a um, developmental signee. Okay, that just happened to be a luchadora, uh, and she was like, I, I feel like I felt like they just grabbed a random performance center girl, threw her. In yeah, a match yeah, basically. Oh, this yeah. Is, okay. Yeah, basically. Okay. So, but like, I think she was like a lucha libre wrestler before they signed her, mm-hmm. and now they just put a mask back on her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean. Sure. I mean, it's. I mean, it's... Uh, we're getting more Sin Cara matches on TV, so yay. But we're also getting more Alberto Del Rio and Selena hey, Vega Ra- matches. No, 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 Sorg. What? Andrade. What did I say? You wow. said Alberto Del Rio. Oh wow! 
Wow. Oh, because I because I read this Del Rio in the chat room, and that's where my head went. I'm sorry about that. Sorg. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to anybody that's not Alberto Del Rio. That's a big yikes, Sorg. Yeah, it is. That is. You you gotta re-examine your personal biases. Listen, man. (laughs) I see the I see the sweatshirt you're wearing, Sorg. What? Miles Morales. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, this is, some, this is my new no, I know. That, that's a I line from like, the movie, Sork. I was like, I don't think I have a hoodie that isn't worn out, so I went Sork, and bought a new a line, hoodie. That, that's a line from the movie. Oh. <laughs> I was making a reference. Oh, it's been... I listen. I just listen to the soundtrack every day. Um, oh, just listen to the movie. I, do, I should. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, I love when I do... I forget this. I tell the <laughs> home uh, that to listen to the Insp- Into the Spider-Verse and uh, I forgot to say soundtrack, and then just pulls it up on the TV. <laughs> so, hey, the Sorg. And then when it does, I just leave it there. <laughs> that's not a bad mistake no, to make. No, not a bad mistake to make. Uh, 2022, by the way. We uh, go back into the Spider-Verse. Sorg, Sorg, April 8th, 2022. You know what that means. <gasps> no way. I am going to have the latest 39th birthday ever. <laughs> Oh boy! I I've already told my fiance. I'm like, hey, uh, babe, I know what I'm doing for my 39th birthday. She's like, what? I'm like, I'm taking <laughs> off. I'm taking off work. I'm going to see that movie three times in a row. Taylor's just freaking out in the chat room with an eek about the sequel. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I think we just broke the news to her. Breaking news! <laughs> Breaking news! That movie that didn't make a lot of money is now going to make a lot more money in the sequel. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh man. Well, hey, with that in that note, I think I gotta interview somebody at ten AM. So that's that's early for me, okay guys. <laughs> so uh Jeez, I'm already at work by then. Nick Farah. Yes, sir. Nasty Nick Farah. He is of course you can hear his voice on uh KSWA that I think sells DVDs. They understand are a lot cheaper than those digital platforms, Trapper. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, what are we doing? I'm sitting right here. Are you are you are you burying me with my face? What's happening again? Uh, but uh, and also over on Black Diamond Wrestling, Angel Gate, and such. I guess we'll see a Friday at Fight Society, right? Yes, sir. You will go uh, check out fights. We've been, of course, streaming the Fight Society shows online. Uh, but there's nothing like uh, you know, there's nothing like being at the show, being. And I was gonna say the front row, but really anywhere, and you can get like somebody thrown in your lap. Uh, <laughs> whether you want to or not, you never know. It could be, I mean, it, it could be a Scarlet. It could be a Shirley Doe. You never know. Mm-hmm. You never know. It, it could be, and it could be take a wrestler home day. Um, you know, you, ca- <laughs> catch, you catch it, you keep it. No catch and release rule. Yeah. Yeah. No catch. And- I, the story, sorry, I don't know if I, I don't know if I throw that out there too much. Listen, man. I'm, yeah. there's, well, there's been issues of people reaching over and trying to take wrestlers home. Hey, man. Uh, I, I, that's why I'm not saying it about the Angel Gate shows. Um, that's fair. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, uh, where can people find you online? Have you cleaned up that social media yet, Nick? No, we still haven't. I'm still that one guy from Pittsburgh <laughs> on Instagram. Fantastic. Mad Mike 483 on the tweets. And YouTube.com slash Poppy. And also... The Lego update for the week. Oh, what is this for the audio? The uh, it's the death of Cedric Diggory. <laughs> I uh, yeah. Is this a Harry yeah. Potter thing? Yeah. Okay. Sword. Come on. Yeah, I, I'm Look, sorry. Yeah. I'm not in the. I'm not in the thing. I'm <sighs> Sorg. Sorg. That that's your that's your that's your homework over Christmas break. What? To watch all the movies. Oh God! Again. Yeah. No. All right, fine. Listen, read the books. Listen, Sorry, in, watch, instead no. of listening, instead of listening to the Spider-Man soundtrack, which is great, listen to the Harry Potter audiobooks. I, I, you can I, get them at you can get them at your local library. I kind of did when Chachi was a roommate. He would listen to them every day, like when he showered, and it yeah. was very loud. And I basically woke up to them every day. Dad, that's a great way to wake up, Sork. Yeah. Uh, Sorgatron on the tweet, SorgatronMedia.com. Oh, the great shows over there, including Bardic Mystery Tour. We're coming through you, Bardic Mystery Tours! Um, and, uh, the Thrifty Podcast, uh, Comic Book Pit just, uh, had their Rite Aid discount table Halloween special, uh, recorded tonight. Uh, so, uh, look out for that. Some, uh, I got some pictures I need to post. That's right. I'm confused, but intrigued. It, well. well, they did it today, which is November 4th. 
Right, of course. So yeah, it's all the. It, but it was their Halloween stuff. special, but it was all stuff that they got on discount at Rite Aid after Halloween. Okay. Did they talk about Halloween in comics? Um, I'm not sure. I just know there was a very risque, um, custom Harley Quinn cover when I when I was paying attention to it. Then I that sounds about stuff. right. Okay. Well, it was a very it was I mean it was tasteful, you know. Well, I mean, but it's it's still Harley. So Hold I mean, on, I'll yeah. send. It. I think I have a picture here. I can send you guys in the group. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't think I can show you guys. Let's see. Here, I'll send you pictures. There, there you go. Okay. There you go. Now you have that. Uh, <laughs> we will be uh we will be uh, uh live Tuesday 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook Live. Uh, for Wrestling Mayhem show, other platforms, but of course the chat is over there. We have Ronnie Starks will be in studio uh, with his championship uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, recovered, hopefully, from uh, the big blue cage this weekend. He was in the war games. He was not the one that bled the most. Um, there was like there was like a lot of somebody left on the on the uh, the mat. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, so he will be there, and also we. I understand Happy Hour will be there, and he's bringing beer. So interesting. I don't even think he's going to get on the microphone. I think he's going to hang out and give us beer. We know how well that goes in the studio. So get ready to get booped, Internet. The boop train is coming. Boop boop. Um, yeah, I know that's not the thing, but still, uh, I, I, to clarify, that's a Hannibal Lecter, uh, mask on his head, Mike, when you see that picture, cause otherwise I, it's going to look awkward. Yeah. Okay. I, I picked, I picked up on the, the fava beans with a nice Chianti really sold it. Yeah. He made the noise and they told him not to do it again. <laughs> oh, you mean, I gotta say, I think he did a better one than you did. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. then. It's not a Chianti right. off, but, uh, you know, he can have right. a Hannibal off. Um, and also we have scheduled a Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Indie Wrestling US Facebook. Uh, we're going to have two of the four Hossmen here in the studio. That would be the Ronan and Stevie LaBelle and the sexy fireman Jason Tyler will be joining us uh, in advance of their Prospect Pro Wrestling show this Saturday in Leechburg. And, of course, if you're on the other end of town uh, near West Virginia, our friends at Rise Wrestling with a Y are having a great show down there with uh, PB Smooth against Tony Johnson in the uh, finals of the Rise of the Contender tournament. A lot of great wrestling going on this weekend, uh, and I'm sure Nick will be at KSWA again. Uh... Just to get all the plugs out. Awesome. No? Maybe? Not sure yet. I, you know what? I didn't even look at the calendar. I just presume they're having a show this weekend at this point. Because <laughs> it seems like it's every damn weekend. So, anyways. Trapper I mean, Tom is still there. So, what, I'm, I think I'm just a villain for right now. What's that? I said Trapper Tom is still there. I think I just might be a villain for right now. I mean, but you know. I'm we, happy to be there. Trapper's got shit to do. I mean, come on. <laughs> He's got uh, trap people, apparently. No, no. It's... Let's explain afterwards guys thank you so much for joining us thank you on facebook everybody joining us all night even uh i saw i saw garrett lee of the wayward sons uh uh giving some shit to nick on there uh that is uh, always appreciated uh so indie, with indie wrestling dot network <laughs> indie wrestling dot network yes he got it well they had a sign in the front row for you for for yeah, indie wrestling dot us for you what's that it, it was wrong wasn't it no it was indie wrestling dot us that's fine that gets there so we were both right? Yes, you were both right. You were yeah, both right. The way we're sunshine. The way we're well, there. then somebody got arrested on Sunday. That video just went up on the Black Diamond Wrestling uh, uh, Facebook page and the Indie Wrestling YouTube if you want to see that as well. Uh, thank you. So we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.